Brazen Royal Row, diplomats fear Prince Charles and Camilla will be drawn into a new spat over woman dubbed Baroness Shameless as she bids for second term as Commonwealth Chief. Diplomats fear Prince Charles and Camilla are in danger of being dragged into the row over the future of controversial Commonwealth Chief Baroness Scotland. Lady Scotland, branded Baroness Brazen and Baroness Shameless for her lavish spending, suffered a major blow today after Commonwealth leaders challenged her bid to win a second four-year term as Secretary-General. A leaked copy of a secret report into the Commonwealth Secretariat highlighted deep concerns about the way it is run and called for more transparency and accountability dash and extra checks on Baroness Scotland's performance. Diplomats in London representing all 53 Commonwealth countries have changed the organization's rules to stop her being automatically reappointed when her four-year term ends next year. The dispute over the future of the former Labour minister, who has already started a behind-the-scenes charm offensive to keep her job, risks a split between Prince Charles and the Queen, who was alleged to have snubbed Baroness Scotland in 2017. The Baroness has met Charles and Camilla on a number of occasions and is said to get on famously with the Duchess of Cornwall. Lady Scotland welcomed Camilla when she attended a garden party at the Secretariat's palatial London HQ Marlborough House on Wednesday. She has also forged close links with Prince Harry and wife Meghan. She hosted a reception at Marlborough House last year when the couple were made joint Commonwealth Youth Ambassadors. Prince Harry is due to attend an event there tomorrow. Two months ago, the Baroness praised the Duchess of Sussex as an inspiration for youngsters in the Commonwealth. She said people were very excited about Meghan's mixed-race background, a green mini would say she looks like me. Lady Scotland's closeness to Charles, Camilla and the Sussexes is in contrast to reports of less intimate relations with the Queen. Her Majesty was conspicuously absent from the 2017 London reception to celebrate Commonwealth Day. The BBC said at the time her absence was linked to her displeasure at the way the Commonwealth Secretariat was being run. However, Buckingham Palace denied this and insisted the reason was logistics not displeasure with Lady Scotland. A senior diplomat told the Mail, the leaked report shows the strength of feeling about Baroness Scotland's determination to stay in post. Charles and Camilla are desperate to make a good impression before he takes over the Commonwealth. Baroness Scotland needs to woo powerful friends if she is to save her skin. There are fears that the Waleses, or the Sussexes, could inadvertently end up as pawns in a fiercely political game. It is an open secret the Queen is not Baroness Scotland's biggest fan. Lady Scotland has been under fire since it was disclosed in 2016 that she spent £338,000 refurbishing her grace and favour apartment in Mayfair. It later emerged a total of £590,000 of the foreign aid budget had been spent on Marlborough House in two years. She was also attacked for appointing political allies to key posts. A senior official forced to quit his secretariat job while working under Lady Scotland won nearly £300,000 compensation. She denied allegations of wasteful spending and has said, It's unfair to refer to me as Baroness Brazen on a false premise that I have been profligate. She has claimed she has been vilified for shaking things up. The leaked report by the 53 Commonwealth High Commissioners said the secretariat is in urgent need of reform. It said there were deep concerns about its governance structures which lacked clarity and priorities and there was a serious and urgent need to stabilize finances. A separate staff survey said there were strong indicators of low morale at the Commonwealth HQ. It has also emerged that Commonwealth leaders have changed the rules, allowing for Baroness Scotland to be challenged next year if she seeks a second term. Allies of the Baroness say she is making good progress in reforming the Commonwealth. Baroness Scotland, the Right Honourable Patricia Scotland of Essil, QC, is known simply as Patsy by her staff. Not because her Christian name is Patricia, though. Neither is her nickname an indication of affection. No, it's an ironic reference to Patsy Stone, the fashion editor played by Joanna Lumley in Absolutely Fabulous, whose extravagance was matched only by her shamelessness. The same has been said of Baroness Scotland during her three controversy-riven years as Commonwealth Secretary-General. The post is considered in one of the world's top diplomatic jobs.
But perhaps, with hindsight, it was portentous that Baroness Scotland, 63, assumed office on April 1, 2016, April Fool's Day. For the joke, in the eyes of many, is that she is still in office despite seemingly never-ending allegations of profligacy, cronyism and an inflated sense of entitlement which have been with met with typically brazen, but not always convincing, denials. The claims have been especially damaging as the Commonwealth exists to uphold democracy, human rights and the rule of law in the 53 mostly former British colonies. None were more so than the headlines surrounding the taxpayer-funded makeover of Her Grace and Favour residents in London's Mayfair. Detailed spreadsheets, leaked to this newspaper, set out her wish list for the Edwardian mansion which included £33,000 of luxury paint, pound 100 a roll wallpaper, a £5,000 vanity unit, £11,000 on a lady's powder room and a £1,200 bill for relocating a chandelier. It later emerged that £307 had even been spent on a lavatory seat. In all, spending on renovations at the six-story mansion rose by £73,000 after the Labour peer took up her position. Baroness Scotland, a close friend of Cherie Blair, initially dismissed the reports of extravagance but a spokesman for her office later admitted she knew about it and said she was furious about the excessive spending, stressing that she had not micromanaged the project herself. Baroness Scotland complained to the press standards watchdog about the mail's coverage. It ruled against her, dismissing the bulk of complaints following a six-month investigation. The revelations caused understandable public disquiet, not least because she and her husband, a fellow lawyer and the father of her two children, own a pound two million house near the Thames and Chiswick, along with a cottage in the Cotswolds. Her comfortable lifestyle was in stark contrast to her humble upbringing as the tenth of twelve siblings on the Caribbean island of Dominica who came to the UK when she was two and grew up on the tough streets of Walthamstow, East London. She used her maiden speech as Commonwealth Secretary General to describe herself as a child of the Commonwealth describing her upwardly mobile life as a journey of firsts. She was, the audience learned, the first black woman to join the Queen's Council in the United Kingdom and the first woman to hold the position of UK Attorney General in 2007. Now she was the first woman Commonwealth Secretary General. What she failed to mention was that she was also the first and only Attorney General forced to pay a £5,000 fine after it transpired in 2009 she had employed an illegal immigrant as a housekeeper. The Tongan woman, later jailed, was paid a mere £6 an hour. Once at the Commonwealth, Baroness Scotland was accused not just of enriching herself, but also an array of cronies. She hired two left-wing political fixers, paid £16,000 a month, together with fellow Labour peer Lord Patel, whose firm received £30,000 a month, to provide strategic advice. Then there were her links to some of the world's most despotic regimes, including the Maldives and Kazakhstan. Elsewhere. The Baroness faced accusations that she only secured her appointment as secretary-general through an utterly corrupt process in which she is said to have awarded bogus knighthoods to influential individuals in Commonwealth countries and made offers of charitable donations in exchange for votes. Now, as then, Baroness Scotland vehemently denies any wrongdoing. The negative headlines keep on coming. Earlier this year, she lost a second tribunal claim over employment practices in her organization amid continued allegations of cronyism. This followed a tribunal ruling that a senior member of staff was entitled to significant damages after he was unfairly disciplined over alleged leaks to the media. The second ruling concerned Josephine Ojiambo, a Kenyan, recruited in 2015 to be deputy secretary general in London. She lost her job in a round of cost cutting the following year. The Secretariat's tribunal found her contractual obligations had been breached. How much did these two cases cost the Commonwealth in legal expenses? More than pound one million, it is estimated. Even Patsy from Absolutely Fabulous might have thought that extravagant.